Hi, and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, and I'm so glad you're here today. Today is an advice from a CEO episode, and I want to talk about purpose, purpose within your company and how when you prioritize it, you can become a better leader, a high performing leader. This is really near and dear to me because when I came to Durango and started working at Stone Age, I was purposeless. I was lost. And once I started my role uh, at Stone Age, I found so much meaning and purpose in my work that it helped me turn my life around. And I'm a big believer that a lot of people go down dark paths because they don't feel like they belong and they don't have purpose and meaning in their life, something to really anchor themselves to. And work is a big part of purpose. I believe that all human beings are meant to work. And if we can find our purpose, if we can tap into what makes that work really touch us inside, inspire us inside, then we can do our best work and we can live our best lives. Um, Unfortunately, there are lots and lots of people who are miserable at work, who do not like their jobs, who don't understand their purpose and are not tied to the company's purpose. And I want to talk about this today because I think it's incredibly important. Um, I would not be the leader I am today if I would not have found that purpose. And part of that purpose is tied to what we're doing as a company. We are disrupting the industry. We are saving people's lives. We are developing innovative technology that is going to change the world. And that's all really exciting. Now, my style is one who is very you know, transformative. I love transformation. I love taking nothing and turning it into something. Um, but we all want to feel connected to our work. And we can only do that when we feel connected to the company's purpose. So that's what I want to talk about today. And I love this topic because Stone Age just became 100% ESOP owned. At the end of 2022, we bought out our two founders, uh, the ESOP owned about 49% of the company and the two founders together owned 51% of the company prior to this buyout and Stone Age bought them out. So now we are truly 100% ESOP owned and this is amazing. And we recently had a party to celebrate this and the energy was just, it was mind blowing. I could not believe how proud people were to work for an employee owned company, how much people loved their job. Not that everything's easy, not that we're perfect because we're not. We have um, issues just like every company does. But I think that people are are more willing to lean into those issues and work hard through them because they get to share in the success of the company and they believe in where we are going as a company. In fact, I had one of my employees who is past retirement age say to me, I'm going to work for as long as I possibly can because I want to be on this ride to a billion dollar valuation. Now, that's really cool. That means the people are inspired. And he said that not from a sense of the money that he might make, but that he was really passionate about what we were doing and feeling part of a team. And uh, and he was motivated and inspired to keep working. And that's so cool, right? We want our employees to be that inspired by the company and where it's going. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this so that you can think about how you are putting purpose into your company or if you don't run a company into your team, because even if you even if the company's purpose isn't clear or isn't motivating or inspiring, you as a leader can still create a purpose uh, for your team that makes them feel motivated, that makes them feel part of something bigger, that it's not just a job and collecting a paycheck. So first, let's just talk about the benefits of having a clear purpose. Number one, it can help you retain and attract talent. And in today's market, that is so incredibly important. I just listened to an economist uh, who works for University of Colorado at Boulder talk about the uh, gap. So for people who are unemployed to the number of job openings that there are in the United States, it's 1.8. There's 1.8 job openings to every person who is um, is considered unemployed, not, not the people who are just not participating. But that is a really shocking statement. 1.8 jobs for every person who is considered unemployed. So the need for talent is going to be so incredibly important. It has been for the last many years. It still is now, and it is not going to change. So 
to be able to attract that kind of talent, your team, your company needs to have a higher purpose. It also matters to your customers. Your customers don't just want to buy a product. They want to buy the story that goes behind that product. When you think about the brands that you love, there's more than just, okay, I'm going to buy this and use this. The ones that you truly, truly love. Now, every company should be on a mission to make their customers love them, make their customers go, oh, my life would be so much worse without them, or I'm inspired to use them. Uh, whatever, uh, whatever it is that they like about your company, whatever it is about that they love about your company, that's really, really important. So having a clear purpose also helps inspire customer loyalty. It can help you make strategic decisions that align with the company's values and goals and long-term success. And it creates a positive social environment where people feel like they're making an impact, not just in their own lives or the lives of their teams, but in the broader society. So Stone Age's mission is quite simple. We are here to help our customers do their jobs on time, safely, on budget and as easily as possible. And we do everything that we can. And we know if we do that, then we are going to create so much value that the company is going to grow and our ESOP is going to grow. So we directly benefit from the growth of the company. And we do that when we inspire both our employees and our customers to say, why would I choose anybody but Stone Age? Now, this purpose is not something that is radical. It is not something that is maybe when one would even consider to be incredibly motivational, just reading it on the surface. But our industry is incredibly dangerous and we want our customers to go home to their families every single night safely, uninjured. We know that this work is really, really, really hard to do. And it's a really important work. Without industrial cleaning, the world would come to a halt, even though most people don't know what industrial cleaning is because it's niche, it's behind the scenes, but it's so incredibly important. And so our employees know that and they know that when they do their very best job to get our customers what they need on time and that we develop products that allow them to go home to their families safely at night, they feel that sense of purpose and they get to directly benefit from it. So that's ours. And it's not something that's totally just out there or, you know, that is like, oh, we're going to change the world. No, we have a clear purpose. And that is that we make products that make the world safer and cleaner. And we are on a mission to do that because we know we play an important role in the lives of our employees and in keeping the supply chain running. So that's that's our purpose. Company purpose does create motivation and inspiration and loyalty within your customers and your employees. In fact, every year, Fortune uh, magazine publishes the, the list of the world's most admired companies and all kinds of companies are on there, Apple, Amazon, Starbucks. And one of the common traits is there is that these leaders prioritize purpose. In fact, this is according to a survey done by Corn Ferry, 97% of leaders at these companies have made the list in the past and have said their organization's purpose is embraced by employees. And 95% believe that their organization's purpose is aligned with the company's goals and vision. So according to Corn Ferry, they correlate the fact that these companies that make this list have leaders who say that purpose is important to them and it drives their behaviors. And we know this to be true at Stone Age because when we live by the Stone Age Assurance Promise, which is our purpose to help our customers complete their jobs on time, on budget, as easily and safely as possible, we talk about it all the time. The Stone Age Insurance Promise is front and center. Our customers talk about the Stone Age Insurance Promise. It drives the behaviors of leadership at our team. Everybody is thinking, how do we solve the customer's problems? How do we build safer products? How do we train them better? How do we support them better? How do we listen to them better? It absolutely drives performance. So it's really necessary. So how do you go about creating um, a higher purpose within your company, or you can translate any of this to your team if your company doesn't have a clear purpose or doesn't communicate purpose a lot. So just every time I say company, just you can take these same things and put them into your team. So the first thing is what are your values? You cannot have a purpose if it's not aligned with your values. So our values have our purpose in it. So our values are 
practice self-leadership, right? Self, how do you show up every single day leading yourself, doing that well? Be a great teammate, right? How do you interact with the team? How are you supporting the team? How do you put the team first? How do you help the team succeed? And then deliver on the Stone Age Assurance promise, which is our purpose to our customers. Like it is literally in our values. So if you are looking at your purpose, start with your values. What are your core values as a team? What are your core values as a company? And make sure that that purpose is alignment. The next step is to make sure you talk to your employees about this. When we develop the own it mindset, which is our set of values, which has the practice self-leadership, be a great teammate, and deliver on the Stone Age Assurance promise in it, we got a group of people together and we brainstormed and we massaged it. And, and it took us about six months to like really come up with it. And we got feedback from employees and we tweaked it over the years. But we did not do this in a bubble as an executive management team. I did not do this in a bubble myself. We engaged all kinds of people across the organization because we wanted it to feel real. We used to have our value system was called the bedrock and no one could remember <laughs> what they were. And we realized that they really just were a list of stuff on the wall. And we didn't want that. We wanted it to be something that people lived and breathed, which is why we created the ownership mindset. So that's why we engaged um, our employees. You also need to make sure that whatever your purpose is, that you really understand how you're going to make an impact in the world. So you should focus on positive impact, right? Ours, for example, we know that if we help our customers do their jobs on time, on budget, as easily and safely as possible, that's going to make their lives so much easier. And I promise you, they have a really tough job. So we are making a positive impact. And as we look at how this has expanded through the industry, like we have dramatically changed the industry with our technology, with our services, with our customer service, we are making a positive impact. And not only are our customers talking about the Stone Age Assurance Promise, and what we're doing, but their customers, right? The end users, the, the plant owners, the, the Exxons of the world, the Dow chemicals of the world, like they understand what we're trying to do to make an impact because we're so crystal clear on our purpose. So you need to make sure that you understand the impact and align the purpose to what that positive impact is going to be. Once you've developed that, you need to clearly communicate it. And I suggest writing it out and using it as in a narrative form. Like that is what the own it mindset is at Stone Age. We have it all written out. It's like three pages, it's a lot to read, but it's like everything that we are. It describes our culture. It describes how you are successful within our culture. Um, we use it every single day in what we do. So we use that as a communication tool. We've built our whole framework around the own it mindset. So we have own it chats, which are quarterly performance reviews, which are led by employees, not by the manager. We have own it training, which is our corporate training for all employees. And then we have a, a, a separate one that's meant specifically for helping managers uh, learn how to grow into better leaders. Uh, we have the own it committee, which is all about creating the employee experience. Like we have built all of this around the own it mindset. So we communicate that purpose every single day, especially since delivering on the Stone Age promise, which is our purpose, is part of the value system. Now, we've also evaluated this. As I said, we've tweaked it. Um, and interestingly, it has, and fundamentally, it has stayed the same. And that's because we understood so deeply what, what our value was to our customers and to our employees that we, we got it right. And we've done, of course, lots of iterative work to get to the own it mindset. But we did modify it over the years to make sure that it was compelling for all people. So there's three basic kinds of instincts that people have. Self-preservation, which is like, what about me? How does this impact me? Then you have social, like how does this impact the team? And then you have transmit, which is how is this impacting the world? And you need to make sure that any of these things are going to hit each of those instincts. So if you want to learn more about that, that is very complex. Um, I would suggest that you look up the Enneagram instincts and you will learn a lot when you read that. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're continually modifying it and um, improving it as the purpose becomes more ingrained in your culture and you get feedback from your customers and your employees. And then finally, 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 you have to lead by example. So it, whether you're doing this for your team or you're doing this for your company, you have to make sure that you act and make decisions that in line with that purpose. So. If we said, eh, no, 
we don't really care if this product gets out on time. You know, we're dealing with supply chain issues. And so, you know, we'll just get it to the customer when it when we can. Um, that is not living up to the Stone Age Insurance promise, which is our purpose. And so even though those things might be true, right, we all have supply chain issues and it certainly has disrupted getting things to our customers, how we talk through it with our customers, what we do to pull strings to get them what they need is showing that our actions are aligned with delivering on that promise. So you've got to lead by example. Otherwise, you have no credibility and trust at all with your stakeholders, whether that's your customers or your employees, that you actually are committed to living your purpose. So that's how you go about developing it. And this is a lot of work, and I understand it can be overwhelming, um, but it's so incredibly important because, like I talked about earlier in this podcast, you have to be able to attract and retain talent, and you have to be able to attract and retain customers. And if you don't have a clear purpose and you aren't leading it, then you're not going to. So just in case you need a little bit of inspiration, I'm going to give you kind of my top reasons why I think that you should make this a priority. And if you do, why it makes you a high impact leader. So the first thing, and I witness this every day at Stone Age, is that it drives employee engagement and motivation. So like I said, my employees understand exactly what the mission is, and we're there to do it. Everybody is on a mission to make sure that we take care of our customers. And that imp leads to improved performance and productivity. So as a leader, that's the kind of team you want, right? You want your employees to show up and do their very best work, be their very best self. And so aligning the work that they do with the purpose is one way to do it. And it will make you a better leader. Again, it helps you attract and retain top talent. You need that to grow your team. None of us can do this alone. And none of us can do this with poor performers or even mediocre performers. So if you want to be a high impact leader, make it a priority to develop your purpose so that you can get those types of employees and keep the types of employees that are going to help you grow your team and grow your company. Another one, of course, which we already talked about is your customer loyalty, right? I love that when our customers come and visit us at Stone Age, they say, how can I get a job here? I would love to work here. I've never seen employees so engaged and so happy, right? Our customers love working with us and it's because we live our purpose to them. We do make their lives easier and we try to have a little bit of fun while we do it. So if you want to be a high impact leader, right, you need to be able to create a customer loyal base. So that's another reason why this is important to you to become that high impact leader. I also think that purpose helps make better decisions. And I don't know what high impact leader doesn't want to make good decisions. I know I do. And so, you know, as you think through what your purpose is and in the decisions that you have to be making every single day, it can be like that guiding light. And that will definitely, it will show that you're committed to the purpose and driving to the purpose and improving the lives of your customers, employees, and help you make better decisions to do just that. And finally, and this is something that's near and dear to me because I'm at that transmit level, right? I want to change the world. I believe that purpose can help you create a positive social and environmental impact. And that is, at least at the CEO level, something that I think we all need to be looking at. What is our legacy? How are we making this world a better place from a social perspective, from, from an environmental perspective, from an employee happiness perspective, from a community perspective? And you want to make that kind of an impact. If you too are motivated by making that bigger impact, then Having a clear purpose, changing the lives of your customers and employees will help you make the world a better place. So that is like the number one motivating thing for me. Okay, so now you understand how to create a purpose and why it's important to you as a leader, especially if you want to be a high impact leader to do it. Um, what do you do next, right? You have to help your employees embrace it. So this is what we've done, right? We've communicated it clearly, right? We created the whole own it mindset. We've we woven it into our whole structure. We talk about it every single day. Um, our performance, our performance uh, process has the own it mindset woven into it and the Stone Age Assurance promise. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Help everybody understand what their purpose is of the company and how their job ties to it. You want to make it part of your culture, right? 
when we created the Own It Mindset, like that is literally our culture, the, mind, the Own It Mindset. We have a culture of ownership, which is so incredibly powerful. And because our purpose, delivering on the Stone Age Insurance Promise, is written in as a value, it is our culture. And it's really hard to get employees to buy into it if it's not woven into your culture. Um, give, your, give employees the opportunity to engage in it. Like I talked about earlier, not just in the process of developing it, but talking about how you create a culture that embodies your purpose, right? So it's great. You've communicated and all of that, but now you've got to get employee buy-in and people want to engage in the process. So, you know, that's why we created the own a committee, which is our employee experience committee. And they are so focused on getting feedback from our employees, making sure everybody understands the own it mindset, getting getting feedback on what we need to change or if somebody doesn't understand something, trying to really create that experience. And they can engage across the entire organization. And this is really important because people want to feel part of it, not just something that's up on a wall or that they're hammered with, right? This really matters. Another aspect that helps employees embrace your purpose is to weave it into their development skills. So that's why we do the Own It training. Um, it is really designed to be able to help them live that values, whether it's self-leadership, whether it's teamwork, or whether it's delivering on the Stony Age Assurance Promise. You know, we are constantly looking at how do we help our employees improve and how does that align with them developing their own it skills. And so employee development is a really important piece of this. It's why we created the Own It training program. Um, and so if you teach them how, if you teach them new skills and, and help them gain new knowledge, that helps them deliver on the pur purpose and understand the purpose, feel the purpose more deeply, then it will resonate with them more and they'll be more focused on making that impact. And then finally, I just have to say it again, lead by example. Uh, why would any of your employees embrace your purpose if you don't? So that's all I'm going to say on that. Another couple of things to think about around purpose. If you can't monitor it, you can't measure it. So you probably want to think about how you can reward progress um, on your purpose, right? Because ours is so aligned with our business, it's easy to be able to, to look at metrics to say, are we doing this, right? Are we shipping things on time? How much are we back ordering? You know, what's going on with our supply chain? What is our NPI score with our customers, right? There are very real things because our purpose is so aligned with the everyday network that we do that it's easy for us to create a... Um, it's easy for us to create metrics around it. So consider creating metrics around that purpose that will help drive engagement and behaviors. Another thing to consider is encouraging volunteerism and community service that aligns with your purpose. So ours is very focused on our customers. So we do a lot within the WJTA, the Water Jet Technology Association. Um, that is the Safety and Technology Association that, that, that covers our entire industry. We do so much to support that. And we really encourage our employees to get involved. Now, we do other things outside of that. But, you know, when we look at all that we give to the WJTA, which is significant, it really is an aligning with our values, right? Without the WJTA, then we wouldn't have this framework for our best practice, safety best practices and, um, and industry requirements from a safety perspective. We wouldn't have a place to be able to promote new technologies, um, to gather feedback from our customers. So... Uh, it's a really important aspect and we definitely do a lot to help them and we encourage people to volunteer and to try to make a big impact um, that gets measured not just through our own company, but through our industry association. So be thinking about that too as you're thinking about purpose. How can you enc encourage volunteerism and community service that will help um, your employees understand how the work that they do contributes to making a positive impact in the world? Okay, so on to my question of the week. So I was asked this by a friend of mine, and she said, how do you know if you're hard to work for? Uh, so she had gotten feedback that she was difficult to work for. She's a micromanager, and she's really learning how to let go of control uh, in her managerial responsibilities, but is struggling with it, which is a common thing. Uh, and so she was asking me that. How do you know if you are? When you get that feedback, are you really or not? I've been given that feedback before, too, uh, when I'm, an employee once told me that I was difficult to work for because I drive and drive and drive, and I like new ideas, and sometimes people don't understand if it's an idea mode or a plan mode, 
and that it can be very disruptive um, and not in a good way. Right. I like to be disruptive, like in the industry, but being disruptive within the organization isn't a good thing. And so um, I took that feedback to heart and I, I really thought about the way that I was showing up and how I could um, be able to still ideate because that's where my passion comes from but not be disruptive within the organization. So we created much more structure around execution, around how we evaluate ideas, how we prioritize ideas, how we just say no to some ideas. Uh, and that was what inspired me to always be a cool, calm, and collected leader, uh, which I definitely got passionate about things and that could be overwhelming to people. So I get where she was coming from because I had to do that whole thing. Like, really, I'm hard to work for? Like, what are you talking about? I give feedback and I support people. and. And I listen so well and I help people grow and I promote them, but that does not make it make you easy to work for. So uh, I would say that if you are questioning if you're hard to work for, consider these attributes. Um, do you set clear expectations? Because if you don't, if people don't really know what they're supposed to do and what success looks like, you're probably hard to work for. Um, do you constantly add new ideas and direction to people? And so they are working on one thing and then go a different direction. If you do that, you're probably hard to work for. For sure, if you micromanage, right? Not just tell people, here's the outcome that the company needs and here's the timeline. Go figure out how to do it. Ask me for help. I'll check in with you. But instead are do it this way. If you don't do it this way, then I'm not going to like it and I'm going to micromanage it. Then you are hard to work for. People do not want to be micromanaged. So if you have control issues and don't want to let things go and are directing people on how to do their work, then you're micromanaging and you're hard to work for. If you are really negative and grumpy, you're hard to work for. It's very, very difficult to be around negative people and it rubs off. So if you're naturally a pessimistic person, you need to really be cognizant of how you show up to your team because if everything is always wrong, if there's always a problem, if you're grumpy, uh, then it's not going to make it a very pleasant work environment where people feel like it's safe to say what they want to say and that they don't get bombarded with your negative energy. So I'll give you two more ways to know you're hard to work for, and then I will leave you for this episode. If you are a perfectionist or if you set completely unrealistic standards, um, or expectations on your employees, then you are hard to work for. You want to be able to push people, but holding people to perfectionism, driving people to results that are unattainable, that burn people out, means that you're hard to work for. And then finally, if you do not step in and solve problems, if you are afraid of conflict, if you are afraid of hard conversations, and you just let things kind of go, or you just sweep it under the rug instead of leaning in to solve problems, then you are hard to work for. Nobody wants to work for a manager who is not good at problem solving, who does not address issues head on. So um, if any of those resonate with you, think about it, right? How do I uh, become a better leader and be less hard to work for if I exhibit some of those attributes? Um, my recommendation is do reading, get a coach. I think coaching is one of the best ways to uncover your blind spots and help you maybe smooth out some of those rough spots in your style. Uh, get a mentor uh, who can help you, somebody who you can trust, but get some help in those areas because remember, employees don't leave companies, they leave managers. And so if you want to be a high impact leader, then you need to be considerate of how you're leading and be conscientious of whether or not you're difficult to work for. Okay, that is my podcast for today. I hope you got lots out of that. Please let me know what you think. And if you like this podcast, please write a review, subscribe to it, share it with a friend, like it. Um, go to my YouTube channel, leave a comment. I will reply to your comment um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to hosting you next week with another great interview. Thanks so much. Take care.